company called Human Factors International. Uh, my name is Rob Gillen, I'm based in London. Um, uh, this is basically, um, if this feels a bit kind of like a science lecture, it's because this is this mega, mega, mega distilled version of a course we do, which is three days long. And I try to just throw in some interesting bits to hopefully make you think about persuasion and emotion and trust and how you engage people in the, the, the sites that you use. And it's mainly website examples, but the, these um, things we're going to talk about, uh, they apply equally to product design, service design, anything which you care to throw out there as an example, where users inter or customers interact with an organization of any kind. Um, very briefly, um, Human Factors International is very quickly uh, with pretty much the biggest single entity, um, uh, which is a, a user-centered design consultancy in the world. Uh, we've got 200 plus professionals in all these places. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm one of the, the Europe team, and uh, this, is, but this is the ad bit, okay? I'm going to do this now, and then I'm not going to do any more advertising. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. We bought your eye track, man. Come on, this is my time. <laughs> um, okay, so we do, we do courses in London, Utrecht, in the Netherlands, and in Hamburg. Um, uh, persuasion, emotion, and trust is, as I said, is uh, a course which um, is new. Uh, we're running uh, in September and in early in the new year. I've got brochures here um, if anyone's interested, but this is not a sales talk. I'm just going to try and give you some interesting tidbits. So, this. Um, so, basically, we all know that um, customer experience is important. I'm not going to patronize you guys too much because I'm assuming a certain base level of knowledge here tonight um, but beyond usability is something which is constantly being referred to um, in, in talks and conferences that I go to and I'm sure that it's something that you're all aware of as well so uh, this is from an IBM survey uh, which um, showed that 79% of consumers will commit to a deeper brand relationship um, through a product or a service adoption uh, after a satisfying online experience. And that 59% of customers would stop doing any sort of business with an organization after a single bad experience. And uh, so this kind of takes us beyond usability because the usability um, focus has always been about finding uh, barriers to task completion and then fixing them. But what we don't think is about what is the net effect of not fixing these errors, or what is the net effect of, of fixing them beyond kind of behavioral uh, performance which we can measure and say, oh, we make the button bigger and 79% of users can now buy this thing. What persuasion, emotion and trust uh, is, is shorthand for is basically why would anyone want to do that in the first place? Okay, so it, it's all about you know the difference between can people do it and would they do it, and that's really what we've become very interested in in the last couple of years, and that's what I want to share with you tonight. So it's important because, uh, and again, I I accept this is kind of uh, user experience 101, but uh, just just to kind of give us a, a, a basis to move forward. Relationship building between um, an organization that has products or services and its customers has passed from you know, the, the traditional model of dealing with a salesperson, uh, and, and this model could either be uh, you know, uh, talking to your local bank manager, which I don't know about you, I don't have one anymore, I don't have a local bank anymore, um, and uh, you know, I, I don't any longer have that personal connection with a lot of organizations in my life that uh, where I used to have a guy who sometimes I was on first name terms with. So I've no longer got that, that kind of rich level of trust that I've developed with an organization. And then organizations have traditionally moved into in-store experiences where you know um, I'm sort of dealt with in the kind of virgin mega store or whatever and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm processed in the store, I'm processed out and they try and give me a decent customer experience, but essentially I'm a unit that's being shoved in and out. But at least I've got face-to-face -face interaction. And then we've moved into um, 
the world of internet and self-serve. And now, one of the, the big problems with this beyond usability is that I've now lost the ability to have a face-to-face -face relationship with anybody. And most of the research which we're going to look at is going to talk about how people develop trust um, through heuristics, which we use, we, we don't know we use them, they're somewhere in our heads, and um, they're kind of hardwired, they're like firmware, they're not quite hardwired in, but they're, um, it's not something that's programmed or learned, it's something which seems to be there from the, from the off. We use them uh, um, to decide whether we like somebody, whether we trust them, and whether we want to do business with that person. And when it's not a person, it's a website, uh, it becomes that much trickier, and so this is something that bears thinking about on a deeper level. So, we're all geeks, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, so, I, 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 you, you know who these guys are, right? No. Please, please say it's not to me. Um, so, okay, this is, this is Spock and Kirk, of course, from Star Trek. Now, Star Trek has a really fascinating, the original um, series has a really fascinating dynamic, um, which has been commented a lot, on a lot by cultural uh, commentators, because um, a lot of the, the drama in the series came from the fact that Spock is like this totally rational, logical being that makes decisions driven entirely by cold logic, and he only does things which have the greatest benefit for um, for himself and for the, the, you know, the crew of the Starship Enterprise. And Kirk, on the other hand, is, is portrayed as this uh, kind of fiery, passionate individual who, um, who makes decisions based on really, really bad logic, like always taking himself and the second most important person on the ship, plus a third person who's bound to die, down to, to the planet every time they go anywhere, which seems insane. Um, but the, the way the, the series portrayed it was usually that although Spock was like the voice of reason, the fact is that Kirk actually, um, his emotions and his intuition and his gut instincts actually made him in a way a kind of a richer, more subtle decision maker than Spock. And actually a lot of things he did seemed counterintuitive at first, but actually they helped him be a good captain. And there were a lot of the series plots were resolved around how Spock appeared to be right, but Kirk made the right call. And this is kind of a cheap shot, but I'm using this um, example because A, it amuses me, and B, uh, I think a lot of traditional systems design and even usability design kind of works around the basis that the user is like Spock, when in actual fact we're all of us Kirks. You know, and again, even if we're not aware that that's how we make decisions, we're bringing to bear loads of stuff which isn't rational, it's not logical, and you, you can't capture it in a, a task flow diagram or a, you know, a click-through analysis of, of a website. And so this is why we really have to, uh, we have to pull these things apart, think about them, because this is actually you know, how people make decisions, and all the social... Um, Science and psychological research out there supports um, the fact that people make decisions based on really weird stuff, but it seems to work. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to complicate it by getting into the sexual politics of stuff. <laughs> that just ruined my analogy. Okay. So, um, persuasion, emotion, and trust. Um, this is this is the kind of the brand name that HFI has given to the course of the product that we're selling. But lots of people, um, if you go to any of the major conferences or go to um, you know, open up any kind of publication or blog right now, um, lots of people in the UX world are talking about the, you know, how to design for persuasion. Um, so I'm just going to briefly define what we mean. So persuasion is essentially communication which is intended to induce belief or action. It's the process of guiding someone towards the adoption of an idea, an attitude, or an action by rational or and or symbolic means. Um, the really important thing about this entire definition is that persuasion is something where I am guided towards making a decision which I am then going to be consistent with. It's not about tricking me for an instant. 
It's not about making me click something through bad usability or misdirection. It's not kind of like Darren Brown stuff. Um, and the most important thing of all is it's not coercive. I don't feel afterwards like I've been pushed into something. This is about getting people to make decisions that where they remain true to themselves, but they've simply been guided towards their position through, um, you know, like, like an old-fashioned rhetorical route. That, that can be, so persuasion, that, that's kind of the logical spocky bit of this. Um, emotion's definitely the, the, the fuzzier um, other Kirk bit. Um, and this is really can be defined as, as a, a physiological state of arousal, which means that for some reason, you know, people talk about someone getting, uh, you know, they got their, their raised heckles or whatever, and, you know, that, that's really when we talk about people who are fired up because they, they're angry or, or they're passionate or they're excited or they're pleased. And these are all things which can be measured physiologically. And uh, it's generally, emotion is almost always triggered by um, a belief about something. And so either I believe...